Hey, welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to talk about something that I think is pretty important, which will help improve your own photography. And that is to look at other people's work. One of the photographers that I go back to from time to time and look at is Ansel Adams. If you were new to photography, you've maybe heard of Ansel Adams. If you're a seasoned photographer, especially a landscape photographer, I'm pretty confident not only have you heard of Ansel, but you've seen some of his work. Some people might say, well, you only look at him as a landscape photographer. And I, I would disagree. And I think that there's other photographers you'd say, well, they're only a sports photographer or they're only a wedding photographer or this or that, whatever genre you think they specialize in. And for me, it really doesn't matter. I think that you can learn from, from anyone by looking at their images because I think the majority of good images have similar qualities, even if it's a sports photograph, a picture of a bride, a regular portrait, a landscape, it doesn't matter. A lot of times they're going to have similar attributes to them. And I think that in Ansel's work, he presents a master class in photography if you really look at some of his images. It takes a little time to look at other people's work and understand why you might like something and why you might not like something else. And I think in looking at other people's works, no matter, again, no matter what genre it is, you can learn something. Now, being that I like to shoot portrait landscapes and sports, I tend to look at those photographers. But for me, Ansel in particular, you can learn so much about photography just by looking at his images and not just landscape photography, but photography in general. I mean, he offers so many lessons in his images that what I wanted to do today was take a look at a few of them and let me try to explain what it is I'm talking about. And I'm going to use this book, Ansel Adams at 100. And it's not necessarily a book review, but what I want to do is look at, I don't know, a few of the images and explain to you what it is I see, what it is I probably saw 20 years ago versus what I see now. I can look at his images and see something totally different than I did even 15, 20 years ago, maybe even five years ago. I recognize things and is in his images now by thumbing through this book, which is why I go through it from time to time, and some of his other books. I own quite a few of his books. And I can now see things in the images that I say, wow, that's why I like it. I didn't understand it before, but I do now. So let's take a look at a few of his images. I want to start with this image right here because to me this singular image is a master class not only in landscape photography but in photography in general and let me tell you why look at the shapes that are in this image I have to admit probably 20 years ago when I was really starting to think about photography a little bit for the first time. I never would have seen this. This is something you develop over time, I think. I'm sure there's some people that can see it right off. But for me, it took me a while to appreciate an image like this. Look at the triangle. Look at the triangle. Look at this triangle. This triangle. This triangle. And essentially, a triangle up here. It's a series of triangles and not only is it a series of triangles 
you have a leading line that goes straight up here that really accentuates, I think, what Ansel was trying to get at, and that is the light coming to the side of that, that hill or that rock. And the contrast between the two, and the contrast between here, and the contrast between here, and the contrast between here and the sky. And of course Ansel is known for his zone system, which if you don't know what that is, I, I'm, if you're new to photography you may not know what it is. If you're a seasoned landscape photography, you'll, I'm sure you've at least heard of it. But essentially what it is, it's a scale of 0 to 10 going from white to black and all the different tones in the middle. And if you look at a histogram on a camera, that's really the zone system. You know, your, your middle section is your middle grays and your left is your black and your right is your whites. And that's really the zone system. But he has almost the entire gambit of grays in this image, and they all play off each other. And if you look diagonally, they play off each other. This is just an incredible image, if you really stop and look at it. It took me a while. I, I probably went through this book four or five times before this image finally hit me, and I realized what it was. It's, this is a master class, not only in landscape photography, but in photography in general. The second image I want to look at is this one, and for a slightly different reason, but it's still a wonderful image for what it is, I think for, for different reasons. I don't know how hard it is to see on here, but it's mostly middle tones. You have you know, one or two specular highlights maybe, and you have your darks. But it's it's really about, A, the middle grays, but I think what it really is, and most of Ansel's, I think his best work, one of the things that uh, some of them will have, and that is this symmetry here, where you almost have a circular image between the ferns, and these flowers or whatever they are down here, these leaves, that makes your eye circle around and stay inside the image. Ansel's very good at that. He, he never wants your eye to leave the image. And he also has, you know, I'm sure it was done intentionally. You've got your leaves up here and you have your leaves in this corner, your leaves in this corner kind of hard to see but you have them down here so you have almost a frame with the leaves but you have this circular thing going on as well and you don't have as much contrast as you had in that other image the first one but you have the same wonderful symmetry just in a different way I wish we had aspens here in South Florida don't have any that I know of. I'd love to photograph them. I think the reason why I like this particular image is because again how you have your or how Ansel has his his darks playing off his whites and the shadows. You have a, more of a middle gray than a dark and then a brighter area, and then a darker area here, and then you have this frame going across here of light, and I don't know how much you can see it, but I would imagine he probably dodged this one tree just a little bit more right here. I, th I think he did to highlight it, accentuate it just a little bit. But this one here, Again, it's, it's totally different from the other two, yet it still has a lot of the same elements. It has your, your darks, your, your, your lighter colors, your different shades, and it still has an area where it makes your eye 
just keeps staying right on this middle section, I believe, at least for me. I'm going to show you this image, and then I'm going to show you the one right behind it, which is the same tree taken in different years, different seasons. But what makes this image, or what saves it maybe, might be a, a better way of saying it, is the way that he exposed it so that, I mean, you can see down here, the base trunk of the tree is a little bit, almost blends into the back of this mountain. But as you get up here, you have the darker limbs to play the contrast off the leaves. And my guess is he probably dodged this, made it brighter over here a little bit. The sun was probably, looks like it was probably coming from this direction because you can see here, even over here, these two trees and even a little bit here, it seems to be the angle of the sun. However, had this limb of the tree not been quite as dark and it blended in with that mountain, it wouldn't have been nearly as, as good of an image because then you would have just kind of had a blob and it just it just wouldn't have been nearly as good but again if you look you've got a triangle you've got a triangle you sort of have triangles here so you still have some of the same elements as that first one with the with the uh, mountain or the rocks whatever they were but again the exposure and the way he did it makes the image. Now let's compare it to same tree, same mountain, same everything else on the next page. It's one of my favorite images of Ansel's. Possibly my favorite. I actually own this one. And again, what makes it is the contrast. Or some people might even say the luminosity of the dark against the white. But you can see the mountain. I don't know how well you can see it. But the, the same mountain is right here, right here. And I'm sure he had to decide how much he wanted to burn in that mountain. Because you definitely want it in there. But you don't want it to dominate the tree. And from what I'm told, because I know I've mentioned him a few times, my friend Tom and I have a couple other friends that actually knew Ansel and have been to his home and, and heard some stories that this was one of the ones that he could never necessarily get the exact same way twice because of the way he had to burn in this mountain. Here's a landscape image taken on Broad Street. And I know some people say, well, it's a cityscape. Well, it is, but it's Ansel taking the elements that that he knew from shooting landscapes and applied it to a cityscape. And what he did was, look at the dark edge here, the light edge here. I particularly like this lamp post, the way it plays off the back here, and maybe even this flagpole, I don't know how well you can see it, but this flagpole that leads you right up into the center of the image. And again, you have all different tones. And what I think he's doing is, and not only that, you have all different shapes. And one of the things that I, th I think he's doing is he's using this dark edge and this light edge and these kind of middle tones up here to keep you inside the center of that image so that your eye still focuses right in here where he probably wants you to focus. Because this here, if you look at this line, this you have this shadow that comes down here. It, it kind of frames the whole thing and keeps your eye inside that image. Here's another one that if you look for it, you'll see it. You have a triangle here. You have a triangle here. You have a bit of a triangle here. You have a bit of a triangle here. And, what, and this dark area here and this slant coming down here, what does it do? It leads your eye right here to, I think, where he wants you to focus in the center on that subject, which is that 
well-lit mountain right here in the center of the frame. So again, he probably darkened this down some and darkened this down some, darkened this, and there's a waterfall over here. So he, I guess is that he burned this in and dodged or burned it in, made it darker all in here to highlight that waterfall. The way the contrast and the lighting works, it keeps you circulating around so that your eye doesn't fall off one side or the other. It keeps you focused here on the photograph. Some might say that this was Ansel's most popular image. That They actually had a book that showed you the original negative versus how much he did in the darkroom and what he had to do in order to print it this way. The original negative looks hardly anything like this. And if I remember correctly, he was in a car with a couple of people and he's riding down the road and he saw this and the light was fading and he had to go and, and get all set up. Now, remember, <laughs> there's no, he didn't have a digital camera where you just pop out of the car and five seconds later, you're firing off five bracketed images so that you can get this. He had to set up his view camera and, and uh, I don't know how long it took. He probably said in the book, but if I remember correctly, he had, this is a cemetery down here and you can maybe see it. There's a bunch of crosses and he had to bleach these in somehow so that he could get some white into these crosses. But I think what makes this and I think if Ansel could be underrated in anything, I don't know that he is, but if he was, I think it's how he, if he had a particular sky, he would take advantage of it. And the sky would be more of the subject than even the mountains. And even here, his use of negative space with just the moon and how it contrasted this with these mountains and then this dark band coming across here. From what I understand, he, he hated to print this image because he just, it was just so difficult, but it was such a popular image, he had to keep doing it all the time. Anyway, that's just a, a few of Ansel's images. They're all a little different. I picked them all for that reason. But they're all, in my view, a real lesson in not just landscape photography, but photography in general, and how you can use different aspects of photography. Anyway, I hope you learned something, and please leave a comment down below, and I'll be back soon with another video. So until next time, take good care of yourself, and I'll see you soon.